Leslie, could you enlighten us on this photo, which I think is a very significant photo? Uh, it looks like the uh, collaboration between Euclid Packard and Stanford University. Right. That's uh, this. I wonder if this is the most reproduced <laughs> photo we have right now. This, I, th you, this is used all the time. Um, is this the genesis of what became the tech world of Silicon Valley? Is this the big genesis of I didn't catch that? Of, of the tech world that later became Silicon Valley with Chocolate Labs and Fairchild, et cetera. Um, I mean, this was before that. Right, yeah. Uh, so I guess I would say, um, to me, this what's valuable about this picture is documenting the relationship between Stanford, which is represented by, I assume he was provost at this point, Fred Terman on the right, and um, his former students, Bill uh, Hewlett and Dave Packard on the left. And um, I think of Hewlett Pack, I, I, I think of Hewlett Packard as really helping to um, seed the soil almost, that then when we think about the semiconductor companies and the, those that came after then sort of took root in. I am, to me, what's always been amazing about Silicon Valley uh, is the successive waves of innovation uh, that have happened here. So, um, I mean, you, you can go back before these guys and look at a company like Federal Telegraph and then here you have the instrumentation people, and then you move forward and you move into the, the semiconductor people, and then in the 70s you're moving into personal computing and video games and the beginning of biotech, and then you move into the 80s and you're starting to bring in the networking companies, and, and then you, just, you keep just kind of moving forwards and you're getting into the web and then into all the social networking we're doing now and cloud and all of this and, and it's the successive waves that I've always found to be the sort of most interesting part of the history of the valley. There are plenty of places that did really well for a very set period of time with one specific industry. Here's a wave I'd like you to comment Here's on. Here's Varian. It's Varian Associates. We have uh, a Mr. Vacuum Tube in the audience here who gave a splendid uh, panel discussion dissertation on Varian in the vacuum tubes, that's Norm Pond. Raise your hand, Norm. There you go. Hope you uh, caught that. If you haven't, it's on video. And What's and the significance of this photo? Well, this is another Stanford-related um, startup. Mr. Pond, do you want to tell us specifically about this photo? It looks like uh, an early uh, experimental Pleistron. Uh, and I guess the comment I'd make is that maybe the most important person in the picture is not the very Hansen. Mm. Uh, right oh, that's right, because you said you were writing about Hansen, right? Yeah, this is the, the L band, uh, the Plystron, not certainly not the first one, uh, that was built by John Woodyard, uh, who's in the lower right, uh, working under Hansen and with the very brothers. Uh, and in the back uh, is uh, David Webster, who was the head of physics department, to whom uh, Hansen reported. Mm -hmm. Webster was kind of Hansen's uh, uh, mentor. And uh, this was a tube that was used for a landing system, a blind landing system that was being built by MIT and Sperry. Mm -hmm. uh, and this picture was uh, likely taken around 1989. Wow. There you go. So that's before our time. Well, and, and the other thing that this picture and the previous one with um, Hewlett and Packard really points out, as did um, your excellent commentary, is um, implicit in those pictures is something about the importance of the military in the birth of early Silicon Valley, which is a, a story that is very often lost in all of the talk um, today. Uh, but uh, Varian and um, even HP, which did not do any sort of direct military contracting, uh, it's sort of a hockey stick phenomenon during World War II.